Welcome back to week three of Access All Areas. Coming up on this week's episode, I set four of my old teammates a cooking challenge in the kitchen. We've also got a look back at the Women's Six Nations highlights from last weekend. But before all that, we've got a re-sign of one of Gloucester's favorite players at the moment. Let's take a look. Clements, a really strong season to this point. Jack Clement, Salamano, humble pass to Clement, really good leg drive from Clement. He sets it up for Young and his Clements! Clements away for Gloucester. Great line, powerful running, and an excellent finish. What a highlight reel. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Clement. Glad it. Well, firstly, let's talk about very excited. We've had Ans come on. We've had all the big signings. Christian Wade's been announced. And now the one that the fans want to see, Jack Clements re-signed. Uh, firstly, congratulations. Thank you. You've been um, very, very good this season. Easy decision? Um, yeah. And don't just say yes if it's not either. <laughs> this is where we get the truth. Yeah, no. Um, I think it's a double-edged sword because obviously there's a very good back row um, contingency at this club. So... Uh, for me, it was a balance of, obviously, I want to play as much as I can. Um, and it sort of has come to fruition a bit more this year. So that helped. Um, and at the same time, being ambitious and sort of seeing um, where I could get my best rugby. And I think ultimately it was here. Um, obviously, we haven't had the best season as such, but recently we found yeah, some really good have. form. I bet you have. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, and, and obviously it's my home hometown, home city club. So... Yeah, that helped as well. That made it a lot easier. And obviously, yeah, everything that comes with this club, the fan base, everything. Yeah. Do you know when people talk about um, getting opportunities, generally, like you've been, let's, let's, you've been a, a fringe-ish player last few years where you've come on, done really well at times. Probably you've been a bit frustrated thinking, I want the shirt for myself now. One thing that's really impressive is when you've actually got more and more game time, but it's not through injury. So you, he, you forced your way in. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. people get chances to come in and generally younger players, even talented players like yourself who've, who get chances often, it's because of injury and then they cement their place. Whereas you've actually forced your way in by just keep knocking on the door, both physically knocking on Skibs' door on a Tuesday afternoon <laughs> saying, why aren't I playing? But also like you just keep, you keep coming off the bench, turning up and eventually he's had to pick you properly, hasn't he? So it's, yeah. probably, a, it's probably a more positive way of doing it. Yeah, and um, to be fair, like I think um, this year Skibs has been very honest with me, like what he wants to see from me more. And um, what is it? What is it? Are you allowed to tell us? What does he want from you? Um, sort of, I don't know. He, he saw, I think he saw me as a bit of a like a like elusive player, but could make mistakes. And um, I think he wanted me just to basically shore up a little bit on the way I played, buy into the game plan a bit more. Um, and basically, I think now like we're at a point where hopefully I think he can rely on me a bit more to do a consistent job and not just have good moments and bad moments. There was a time when you were coming on and like making a massive impact and then like all, almost you, even if you got 10 minutes, you'd want to make a massive impact, wasn't there? Yeah. Do you reckon like develop, I remember um, giving you a role kind of at Worcester, do you remember? <laughs> on the line away at Worcester. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we almost kept the clean sheet and then you gave a penalty away on our yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. But it was, and it was for the good of your development, of course, yeah, I think yeah. it was anyway. <laughs> um, but I think, I think like the development of that is like, you then start to pick and choose your chances. And we see now both over ball and in the carry, like that is all coming to, coming yeah. to work in it. Yeah, and I think that's what I've learned. The, like one of the biggest things is, especially off the bench, you want to get your hands on the ball, get involved, make a play, whatever it may be. But just that patience of like, I've been told to, you know, stay in, in the game plan, stay in the process a bit more. And I think that has actually benefited me in my game at this club, especially. So yeah, a big, a big learning curve for me, like you say, is just yeah, uh, sort of biding my time, picking my moments and yeah, it's, it's well, you, been better this year. You got a moment, didn't you? You got selected England A. Um, yeah. Told you would, didn't I? 
When, when did I say that? When, yeah. what, how far through the season did I say you were going to play that? <laughs> I don't want to sound you, like you, I know quite a lot, but <laughs> when did I say? I remember the change room a couple of times you kept mentioning it. I was just like, oh, five games what will be, will be? <laughs> Five games into the season. Yeah. Clem, Clem, you're going to play Saxons. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was half right. You got in the squad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how was that? Obviously, getting in massive high, like you deserved it. And then, obviously, a week away, training, not getting in. Yeah. Cheers, Gibbs. But um, <laughs> not getting in to, to get a chance to play. Yeah. But what, what about the experience? Uh, yeah, no, so it was amazing. Like, Skivs actually pulled us on the morning of the announcement and um, told us all that we were all involved. The camp was amazing. Like, it was, there was a lot of boys that I actually knew growing up from, like, England under 18s and 20s. And it was really nice to sort of rekindle, like, those relationships and play again with those sorts of boys, different sort of environment, system. Um, Anyone impress you? <laughs> Anyone massively impressed that you didn't know before? Uh, to be fair, the whole team impressed me in the game. I yeah. mean, they were pretty dominant, so... Tom Pearson was a good player. I think yeah. obviously he dropped down from the England senior squad, so he brought a lot of experience of what sort of they'd been training and learning. And you could tell that he was... Um, so actually, he began at Gloucester under-18s a few years ago, about five, six years ago. He was a Dean Close boy, but he obviously didn't get a contract <laughs> at Gloucester. Seeing him from six years ago to now was uh, pretty stark well, to see I mean. how much he's come on, yeah. yeah. And obviously he delis delivers it for Northampton. So, yeah, it was, it was obvious to see in the week how professional he is. Um, fans getting to know Jack Clement, what is... Jack Clement in the outside world then. So finished training, obviously there's your, we know how professional you are, always yeah. hydrated, always yeah. in a protein <laughs> shaker. Um, straight to Bacon Grays? Yeah. Yeah, all um, the coffee shops are available, but <laughs> straight to Bacon Grays for you? Yeah. Normally, Every day? Normally swing by Bacon Grays, see you in there with uh, a person, just sort of do some networking <laughs> and then... Uh, and then straight to? Straight to the Oki, yeah. yeah we like, um, we call it the Ali Pali. It's actually the Somerset Arms pub Somerset in Cheltenham. Arms. One of, the, one of the finest spots in Cheltenham, yeah. though, isn't it? Proper boozer, yeah. Proper boozer, but you're just there for a water, aren't you? You're there, <laughs> he's more there, you're there to hone your skills, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's, we call it the lab. So yeah. um, we go there and... Who's and the it, we? Uh, well, there's a few different boys, so... Um, Still waiting for an invite. There's, yeah, there's actually a bit of a seeding system now within the club because we've got our own Oki in the club, so... It's a pretty competitive sport. I'd say up there is Freddie Thomas, yeah. um, Seb Blake's a good player. A lot of boys who spent so much time at boarding school. <laughs> a lot of free time in the um, hands. Josh Happer is actually a really good player, and so is George Barton. But yeah, no, there's, um, there's a good actually group of said it, yeah. And, um, and yeah, we like to just play afternoons and almost a bit of a side hustle. Um, another thing that I think our fans won't know about is you're, you're the link man, aren't you, between our Argentinian contingent and the rest of us. So when they have arguments amongst themselves, <laughs> you're the man who knows what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, yeah. How did that, where did that come from? Uh, so I grew up in Spain for 11 years. Yeah. Um, my parents moved out there when I was five weeks and uh, had a restaurant out there. So, yeah, no, so I grew up as a what Spanish kid. Uh, just doing sort of seafood on the, on the seafront now. Yeah. 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 Um, what? Back here, restaurateurs or not? Uh, no, 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 going their separate ways. They, they separated out there and oh, went sorry their separate that. ways. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, oh, as if didn't know that. I mean, <laughs> you see, he seems okay about it, don't you? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, it's therapy couch, casting couch, Oh, no, whatever, no, no, they, they both be. moved on, on, on yeah, so, okay. um, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. We don't need to talk about your family history no, anymore. No. Um, let's talk about history of Gloucester, though. Um, Friday was decent, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, actually, no, I actually really enjoyed it. It was honestly because we we built up the week of Leicester wanting to come and and sort of have revenge on us, and you know they they talked up having their international players coming back from their Argentinians and their Six Nations players, and sort of it just you know added extra motivation for us to go up there and do a job at Welford Road. And I mean the club hadn't won there in 16 years, so after the game, absolutely buzzing. It was just amazing in the change room and the feeling was brilliant. I think it's a really nice link because. There's a man who sat there patiently waiting to come onto the sofa, Stephen Varney. 16 years, Clem just said it, 16 years, you were in um, nappies last time we won at Leicester, yeah. and you were the man to spark it, weren't you? Yeah, it was a team, dry, team try, to be fair. Was that a team try, was yeah, it? it was. Yeah, You beat people from 40 yards and stepped yeah. the last man, but that was, was a, a good team off, try. Good offload from Seb. Then, Talk about Seb Blake for a second. He was on fire, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, he was amazing. Yeah? Best performance I've seen him play. Steve, um, you've had a good few weeks, haven't you? Yeah, not too bad. Um, Italy basically won the World Cup yeah, in the Six Nations. Made some history in the, in the Six Nations. What was that like? So, obviously, um, me and Jack, we've got international experience, haven't we, Jack? Um, 
coming back into camp, so coming back into our environment, leaving camp there, obviously you've left Italy at times before where it's been quite low and you've probably been desperate to get back into Gloucester and play, see, see your mates play. But actually just leaving that after a long, it's been a long campaign, hasn't it? Eight yeah. weeks away, you have to do a lot of traveling back and forth because it's different to the England boys or yeah. other boys getting having to be rested. Like, what was that like for you? Yeah, it is tough, obviously eight weeks away. It's very, very full on. You're constantly in a hotel, for me anyway, because um, obviously the Italians, we stay in the hotel for all the campaign. Um, so yeah, it's tough, but getting a few wins is, is, is good. We, I've got some confidence now from, from that and bringing it into Gloucester is, is good. And, and what about you, Steve? Fans are getting to know a little bit more. You let them in a little bit, don't you? But you keep yourself to yourself a bit. What, what about, do you go to the hockey with Clem? Uh, yeah, we do in the winter, but I'll probably migrate to golf now in the summer. Yeah. Who would who be part of the golf club? What's that? Who's part of the golf crew? Uh, me, George Barts. Barton, yeah. uh, Seb Blake. So you can only get, there's a limited amount of tee times, isn't there? Yeah. Like it's basically a race to the tee times. Yeah, we take them all. And I'll be taking a lot of corporates there this year, so good luck. Yeah. yeah? Right. Lads, we've got um, the opportunity for hat trick of trophies this week. <coughs> Rifles Cup. Um, it's the real. Well, you know, it's the, that's the it's the treble. Is that? Is that uh... It's the treble this week, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. This is an opportunity. Was that a rifle? It's a, oh, something like that, isn't it? Oh right. Okay. It's a chance to win an unprecedented treble. Um, how was training? Firstly, you've just done your big day, haven't you? So that's the end of that now. How was training, and how did the team feel about Saturday, Bristol at home? Yeah, good. I think um, there's a lot of confidence within the squad which, at the moment, which is really good. Such, no. such confidence, I love it. <laughs> um, we know Bristol had a really good result Friday night against Northampton at home, who are obviously at top of the league. So we're definitely not underestimating the challenge, but you know we, we're full of confidence and um, yeah, we'll go and see and attack it. Yeah. What do you think, Steve? So it's obviously Leicester comes off the back of like, we know what Leicester that, that's the game plan for Leicester's felt relatively simple, wasn't it? Yeah. Do things change now going to Bristol? Obviously, they play a very dis different brand um, of rugby to Leicester. Can I, can I go through the tactics? Is this going out before or after? Don't go for the full tap. Just give us a brief, higher level summary of what, what you'd think. Uh, obviously, they're, they're quite chaotic. <laughs> can I go through the tactics? <laughs> well, we're going to run this. We're going to run straight up the middle around the yeah. corner. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're, they're quite a chaotic team. Uh, when you give them a bit of space, they got some good dangerous threats, um, individuals. So yeah, it's just nullifying that and packed out Saturday afternoon, King's Home. Yeah, be looking there. Looking forward to it. Hey? Should be good. Thanks very much, fellas. Now let's take a look at how our Gloucester Hartley players got on at the start of Women's Six Nations. In the Women's Six Nations, England got off to a typically dominant start, beating Italy 48 points to nil. Gloucester Hartbury's co-captains Mo Hunt and Zoe Olcroft made their return to international rugby, while Mackenzie Carson scored her first England try, with assists from Alex Matthews and Maud Muir. For Wales, Clakey George kicked off proceedings at the Cardiff Arms Park in a close game where Gloucester Hartbury were represented on both sides of the park. Katie Mattinson for Scotland, Hannah Jones, Kerrin Lake, Nell Metcalf, Bethan Lewis and Cecilia Tuopolotu, who scored a rampaging try from a tap-and-go penalty for Wales. In France, Neve Jones topped the tackle charts across the opening weekend with a valiant 23 tackles, although it wasn't enough for Ireland to record the first win over France. Best of luck to the Gloucester Hartbury girls in the action for round two of the Six Nations. Now let's head back to King's Zone where I put some of the boys to task in the kitchen. All right, chef, so we have got a Charis and Clarge creamy chicken korma. I'm making a chicken Rogan Josh. Is this something that you would do at home? Honestly, I yeah. do a creamy chicken korma at home every other week. Fraser. Is my sous chef Fraser? Fraser. Uh, you can jog on, mate. Fraser. Fraser, you. you're head chef, aren't you? Oh, yes, head yeah. chef, yeah. You're I'm the sous, sous chef. And yeah. what was the reasoning that you asked Harry to be your sous chef today? Um, basically failed at doing an Instagram page on cooking. Um, so I thought I'd give him a second chance. Um, so we'd, and I thought he'd fitting for where these two hairless pipes. Let's have a look. Sunflower oil, uh, chicken thighs, moisture, nice like that. 
two grated garlic. I think we just blend it and make a paste. Blend that. Yeah. yeah, I might start prepping the onions, actually. You're getting that. Talk us through, Fraze. Oh, he's fucked it already. Oh, fucking watch Jeez. out. They're sharp, man. So you get a dice it, you dice it. No, I'm just checking. We need it. He's, oh he's gone God. wrong already, bud. <laughs> oh, God. He's gone wrong already, bud. No, I haven't. Yeah. Oh, that's... <laughs> oh. Hey, that, honestly, that looks lovely. Smells like right? your breath, mate. Yeah, we need to just slide... Oh, nice. Oh, lovely. These, these, these are, these are going to melt down perfectly. Have you done not Oh, oh, oh. Are you saying up? Sit, sit, Fraze. I don't like that. Need some better knives, Mike. Oh, 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 look at that. That is actually silly. Can we have some of that? Look how thin they are. They're going to caramelise them. Wait, these will melt down nicely. What do you want to do with that? I like a chunky onion. You need to chop that one. Rustic curry. Yeah, curry. 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 Well, don't you don't you just don't ruin it. You just absolutely boss cut an onion. Don't ruin yourself now. I need to get this chili into. Uh, so chef, you know what I've heard? It's the it's the flesh that's closest to the skin that has the most flavour in ginger. Is that true? Yeah, it is, baby. <laughs> Next, cumin. 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 There, just there. We'll get a, a tablespoon of that, please, Grace. Yeah, you I'll get us a, a little dish and start putting together the spices. Now, we're, gonna get a, we're about ginger. to get a blender, though. I don't know how to chop well, ginger. Okay. How do you chop ginger? This is clean. We've cleaned this, so... Bang that in there. Nice and crushed. No. Start with the onions, garlic, ginger. Sweat them off. Put the, sweat them off. Put the spices in. Yeah. Do you know why you're sweating? You, you um, high huh? sugar content, is that right? It is now. See, so, yeah, there you go. Yeah, hey, well, you, everyone's learning today, John. Will you um, do me a favour? Shut up. Yeah. And secondly, <laughs> um, just get some spices and we'll put them in a bowl and then we're ready to start cooking. Bit lumpy. <laughs> Really good. Just perfect, actually. That's okay. just what we were looking for. What's it? Chili powder, mixed spice, chili powder. Are we adding a bit of spice to our uh, korma? I think so. Do you have any salt? That's going to keep loving there, though, isn't Some coriander. What is it? Some yeah. allspice. Some cumin. There's no allspice. No allspice. We'll move on. Cumin. All no. Spice. no. Cumin, coriander. Yeah, so hang on. Mixed spice? Yeah. How much can we put in? Uh, all spice. All spice. That's a tablespoon. A quarter of a teaspoon. Is that a teaspoon? What's this one? Cumin. One and a half teaspoons. How much turmeric? Half a teaspoon. Bam. So we are. James Hudson Nutrition would like that, wouldn't he? He loves a bit of turmeric. Well, this is all for that for you, yeah, yeah. Bang in there. Um. Oh, no, I don't think we're cooking there, chicken. Or not? No. What are you doing? He's trying to put a calorie bit in our curry. Done that. You probably can do that well. Um, you're cooking your onions, right? You know, he's going back in. Let me have a try of yours. He's drinking more beers. There, Mark, I'll get more beers. Where's the uh, rock? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! Go ahead and milk! Look at that. Look, I've had to try it, yours. Oh, get over. <laughs> this is the recipe they were following creamy chicken korma that made a vindaloo. <laughs> Dress hot. King Kong dress hot. I think that's that, that's gonna be our thing. We can have a bit more cocoa, but we need it. Tender portion, because the camera's on us. 
Spicy though, cheese. Drop me some pineapple, find it hot. Oh, that's lovely, that is. It's nice and fresh. We give you chicken Rogan Josh. Sabbath! Is that how much everyone's getting? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'll be over the moon. <laughs> now, this is the portion sizes you're getting at the curry now. Very generous. <laughs> Explain what it is, Grace. Chicken Rogan Josh. It's delicious. <laughs> Spicy chicken korma. Cheers. Thanks very much for watching. Get your tickets for Bristol now. Let's pack out King's Home on Saturday. If there's anybody you want to see on this sofa, then comment below, tag them in it, give them some abuse so they end up getting on my sofa. And also, if anybody else wants to offer us a location, we've had an amazing offer to get somebody shedding their garden so far. So we'll be on the road soon. Cheers.